Hi, I am here at BioFuture. I'm Simon Fishburne, Editor-in-Chief at BioCentury. I'm here with Bill Hasseltein, of course, a long-time huge name and mover, driver in our industry. So I want to start with this. I'm going to ask you something in a minute rather forward-looking. But, you know, founded Human Genome Sciences more than a couple of decades ago. When you were starting out, thinking about where we are now, if you were at that point to have projected, how are we doing compared with what you thought at the time? Well, our technologies are even more powerful than I imagined. Let's go even further back. Okay. I had a decision to make as a young man, which field to go into, chemistry, physics, or biology. And um, I picked biology as a field that would move most quickly. And I'm happy to say that was a very good choice. Okay. Now we go back, we go to uh, 1992 when I was creating Human Genome Sciences. And the idea was to provide new tools so we could begin to work on any medical problem we wanted. And that worked very well. And now when I look at the tools that we have and I look at the production, the scientific and medical production, it's phenomenal. It's, I would say, beyond what I imagined, better. So bioscience is moving in a more rapid way. Is that true of the pharma industry? Well, the hard part of pharma is once you have an idea to make it work in a, in a person. And the way I describe it over dinner to people who aren't scientists is it's like uh, in 19, maybe 1820s, having a Ferrari and throwing a wrench into the engine and hoping it gets better. We just don't know a whole lot. And you put something into our body, and it's likely to do more harm than good. And most of the time, that happens. So that problem has not gone away. It's gotten a little better. There's still, as every CEO knows, it takes a lot of effort to get a drug to work in a human being and the human population, because we're pretty diverse. So what I'm hearing is the science, and in particular the technology, has really gone leaps and bounds but we haven't necessarily made the progress we should have done in the business of making drugs and getting more efficient at making drugs. Is that what you're saying? That's a good summary. It's not so much more efficient. It still takes a long time. Now, there is one great exception, which we all know, which is the COVID vaccine, which shows things can go much, much faster uh, when they have to. All right. So, and you've obviously been a huge... Um, pioneer in infectious diseases, HIV and AIDS. And so maybe you can tell us a little bit about your thoughts on next generation vaccines and what we should be thinking about. Well, we now know a lot about the vaccines we have. The good news is for a few months, they really protect you from infection. And for a few months more, five or six months more, maybe, they protect you from serious disease and hospitalization. And then no matter how many times you've been boosted, they poop out. We need to do better. We need to understand what it is that protects us from disease, even if we're infected, and we don't know that. Some people say it's T cells, some say stick up your nose, breathe it through your mouth, uh, swallow it. There's all sorts of ideas, but nobody really knows. We need better vaccines. There are some really new technologies for mRNA vaccines that are coming along. They're called self-amplifying. So you don't need all these lipids, you don't need funny nucleotides, you just stick it into the skin, you just blow it into the skin, you don't even need to inject it. And uh, it works pretty well, that protein will be produced for a month or more. And I think those technologies are going to be the next generation. Whether they're going to solve the problem for vaccination, I don't know. From the very beginning, what I've said for, about this disease, it reminded me of HIV AIDS. We don't have a vaccine for AIDS. We have vaccines for COVID, but they wear out. We need something better. We need really good drugs. We know how to make them from 40 years of HIV work. We just aren't making them fast enough. So my last question is this. We know that historically, um, infectious diseases have been you know, one of the biggest scourges. And you know, credit to our industry that we managed to tamp down many of those. It's still a huge burden, and yet, the last, what should we say, decade or more, the farmers, the industry has really gone away from infectious diseases. COVID changed that. Is that a blip? Or do you think that going forward, we're really going to see new energy put into infectious diseases, which still on a global scale 
are one of the most pressing health needs? Uh, I hope it's not a blip. Uh, we've seen these blips before. Uh, we've seen the, company, the money go in, we've seen the money go out. I can't tell you what it was like to be a coronavirus researcher in 2008. It was just all the money was gone. And it was a huge mistake. Um, I would say that there's something... I just want to interrupt because actually it wasn't just then. Even with the SARS, the yeah, first SARS right. outbreak, with MERS, we went down this road and then they walked back. They, all the money disappeared. That's in 2015, 2000. You just couldn't get money if you're a coronavirus researcher. I made many friends in that community after COVID and uh, they all were busy ramping up their labs. But I can tell you, we know so little about that virus. Even today, I'm writing a textbook uh, on the molecular biology of COVID and another one on COVID writ large. And what we don't know will fill up two textbooks. Yeah. Okay, but let me say something people should understand. We are the new favorite ecosystem for nasty bugs. There are eight billion of us, five billion individual airplane trips a year. That is that city for infectious diseases, and it's not by chance that we're getting these. AIDS came because we connected travel with Sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, this is spread around the world, like the liquor split. I mean, I would see a variant pop up in South Africa, and three months later, it would be devastating in New York, and then the West Coast and the, the rest of the world. I mean, we are connected. We have to take these seriously. Now, people like me and a lot of people have been predicting something like this. But we're still predicting it. Those predictions haven't gone away just because we got one correct. There will be many more, and we need the industry to take this seriously. So next time we're hit with this, it's not terra incognita like it is for what it was for COVID. We're filling in the blanks, but there are a whole lot of blanks to fill in still. Well, I think you're one of a very notable chorus of people who's calling for this, and let's hope that this time... Uh, you know, it, it's not a blip. This is by a future, and we hope our future is better than our recent past. Thank you.